Hey guys, Lunch Money Comics here. Today I went to a garage sale and I got one of the best comic hauls of my entire life for an incredible price. So stay tuned, you've got to see this. Something a little bit different today. Somebody posted on my local Facebook Trash to Treasure that they're having a tag sale tomorrow. And they mentioned among all the things they're selling, some comic books. So I actually contacted the person and asked them what kind are they and they called me back and they said they had hundreds of comic books and they had moved to Massachusetts from California a couple of years ago and they had tons of stuff they were trying to get rid of so I said uh, rather than wait till tomorrow can I go for right now? And they said sure. So I'm heading there right now. Stay tuned. I might find something good. Yeah, be, you can start off there. Oh sweet. All right, oh, that's exciting. Is. So I'm switching over to the voiceover again. I usually don't like doing that because I like the sounds of like the comic books, but there was another individual here uh, picking through the garage and he had some very salty language, not safe for work or kids. So right here you see the first appearance of Blackheart. This is like the sixth comic book that I looked at. So I had high hopes at this point. One thing I forgot to mention is that this garage sale was like a mile from my house. So I kind of wanted to make a good impression on this guy, you know, if he had other comic books for sale, some better stuff, or if just someone in the future to talk to and trade with. You see here I find a nice old army comic that was pretty cool. I found this West Coast Avengers, first appearance of the Great Lakes Avengers, this Hercules 1. And this is the first box. I've been here for, you know, five minutes and the first white vision and now i'm having some really high hopes and i actually had to put the camera down because as i started getting really into these boxes i sort of realized it needed my full undivided attention so there were a lot of really good things you see are going to pop up i saved most of the surprises for the end i think but in general this guy you know he liked spider-man he had some x-men he really liked sort of oddball things he had some like japanese comics some manga he had some really strange sort of underground stuff which I know can bring a pretty good price, but I just don't know enough about it. You see here is a big one we'll talk about later and another one back to back. So at this point, I've gone through like three or four really big boxes and then he points me to this last box, which hadn't been seen yet. And you know, nothing jumps out at me. And then 10th comic book in, first Mr. Sinister, put that off to the side. And I keep going through this box and some of these were bagged and boarded, but there's nothing good there. And you can see the leg sticking out. I saw it, there it is. Off to the side it goes. Yeah, this last box was absolutely killer. It really upped the value of the comics I had put aside and I was starting to think about my offer. Okay guys, I just left the garage sale. Um, it was really good that I got to go there before the actual sale tomorrow because I pretty much had all the time in the world to go through these boxes and there were a lot of them. There was at least five boxes I went through and the comics were just sort of tossed in there, not really protected at all. And the reason he sort of had them in there was because his good stuff was down in the basement. He has hundreds of comic books and he invited me back uh, at another time to check them out and just talk comics. But I was going through all these boxes and I ended up with a stack of 46 comics. Now, I was hoping to maybe get them for, you know, a buck each maybe, you know, and there wasn't too many great things. But then I started hitting like a good patch of, you know, semi keys, things worth, you know, a little bit of money. And then I got to the last box and I grabbed a couple of comic books that sort of elevated my stack of comics. When I asked him how much he wanted, he said 50 cents a comic. My conscience got the better of me and he was a really great guy. Um, so I did not pay him 50 cents a comic. I was pretty open with him about a couple of the comics, what they were worth. And I definitely paid him more. I'm going to go through them all and show you guys what I actually came up with. And I'll tell you what I ended up paying total for them. Stay tuned because it's a pretty incredible collection of comics I just walked away with. See you soon. So, I'm not home. And the reason is, as soon as I got home and dropped those comics off, that guy called me and said he found two more boxes he wanted me to look through. So, I guess this says something about building a good rapport with somebody. Um, I'm heading back over there right now. The skies are about to open up. So, I need to get over there before it just completely downpours. And hopefully I find some more good stuff. Okay, the sky did open up. I, I made it into the guy's garage uh, right in the nick of time. Uh, yeah, you know, I actually found some pretty good stuff in those last couple boxes. Nothing like what I found before. I got another 30-something comic books there. It was definitely a worthwhile trip for me. But, long story short, I have probably about 60 comic books that I'm going to show to you guys. And I'll explain how much I spent on them. 
See you down in the basement. Okay, wow. Um, I'm back home. I've spent the last two hours going through all the comic books that I got. I ended up with about 75 comic books total. And despite the fact that you saw probably two minutes of footage, I was actually there for probably the better part of an hour. And even through all that time and all that searching, I'm still pretty sure I missed some really good comic books. So much so that I might actually go back tomorrow when they're actually having the garage sale proper. I've changed into my Marvel shirt. I'm excited to go through these. And what I've done is I've broken these up into sort of three tiers. One, I have a stack of comic books that aren't worth that much. They're just really, really cool. I either like the covers or they'd be good for my son or something like that. Just comic books I liked. And again, they were really cheap. Second, I have a pile of like minor keys in comic books that are probably worth like 10 to $20. And the final pile that I have is the really good stuff. I'm gonna make you wait for that pile. Some of the things you did see in the footage, but there's a lot in there that I'm excited to show you. So without further ado, let's start with the easy stuff, the cheap stuff that isn't worth much, but is pretty cool. All right, these are comic books that I got for my son really quick. This is a Fantastic Four annual that he saw at another comic book store recently and we ended up not getting it. So there you go. And he loves Silver Surfer. So we got a Silver Surfer with the Guardians of the Galaxy. We have a great Silver Surfer cover, number six. Oh, these are all from the 80s uh, series, late 80s series. So we have number six, we have number seven. Really great cover on number 20. Um, a really cool Galactus cover on number 51. And this one here, number 71. At first, I thought it might have been the first appearance of Morg. Evidently, it's not. But all cool comic books. These are for my son. Now, comic books that I got for myself that aren't worth particularly much. But again, I was just grabbing everything that I thought looked good. So let's start with a whole bunch of Spider-Mans. We have Web of Spider-Man number two. I have Web of Spider-Man on the wall back here. I don't think these are the Vulturians he's fighting. We have, uh, I think this is the second appearance of the answer bad guy. So this is Spectacular Spider-Man 93. Spectacular Spider-Man 96, I got two of them. Don't know why. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man 102. 104, 110, this is actually a battle uh, with Daredevil and Spider-Man. I actually already own this one. It's sort of the conclusion of the Sin Eater saga. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really cool comic book. I was happy to grab another one. It's just, it's neat. Um, next up, we have uh, just a Puma cover. I like Puma. Spectacular Spider-Man 113, 116, really cool cover with Sabretooth. It's also a minor first appearance, I believe, of someone I haven't heard of, but it's pretty cool. We have Spectacular Spider-Man 169, just a really cool villains cover, kind of a Sinister Six cover. We have 170, Amazing Spider-Man 264, and Amazing Spider-Man 270. Now, I have a couple other comic books that are in the runs of both Spectacular Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man in the other piles. I'm slightly annoyed because 265 is the first appearance of Silver Sable. And in retrospect, I'm pretty sure I skipped over it. I think I remember seeing it and I don't know where I put it. So I might have to go back tomorrow just for that one. Okay, moving away from Spider-Man, we have a couple of Daredevils. Um, nothing particularly happens in these. Um, 199, just thought it was neat. 220, this is actually not in great shape, but it has a really cool cover. I think now is a good time to point out that even though all these comic books were just loose in the boxes, they are in remarkably good shape. I was actually shocked by how good condition most of these were, but there were a couple I'll show you that unfortunately did get kind of banged up or one that was actually chewed by a rodent, I think, but shockingly good shape for just being tossed in a box for 30, 40 years. Now we have a whole bunch of Fantastic Fours. Um, we have a really cool Doom cover. Looks like a painted cover. This one has Hitler on the front. I thought it might be worth some money. Um, it's not, I think it's a time travel one. Maybe, thought it was interesting. Another Doctor Doom cover. A really cool Doctor Doom cover. I love this one. This one might have to go on the, the wall behind me. How cool is that? This one here, and we have again, Mr. Doctor Doom in the back. Another Doctor Doom, this one's Uncanny X-Men we're moving on to now, this one at Doom. You know, Doom, everyone expects to come to the MCU eventually. I've been sort of grabbing lots of uh, Doom covers. I guess they're pretty hot right now. So anytime I saw Doctor Doom, I grabbed it. 
X-Men 202, really cool Sentinels cover. Uh, another one, this is 218, it's got Rogue, Dazzler, Psylocke, and Longshot, just a cool cover. <laughs> this one I didn't choose, uh, the guy I got it from was just kind of looking through, he's like, oh, that's a neat one, and he just like took it upon himself to add it to my pile. Uh, I thought that was kind of funny, but it's a cool Wolverine. I don't know why I grabbed this one. This is a New Mutants. It just has uh, Magneto fighting the Black King. We have a Jack of Hearts number one. And we have a Random Avengers 328. Again, uh, I was hoping it was the first appearance of Rage. It's more of the, uh, like his origin story, you know, background. But I thought that was pretty cool. So let's move on to the medium good pile. Let's start with sort of uh, honorable mention here. We have the Amazing Spider-Man 332. This is an old Venom versus Spider-Man comic. It's actually, I found out afterwards, the first appearance of Venom's tongue, his long tongue, I guess. And it actually does, you know, go for some money. There's one problem. Of all the comic books I got, this one's in the worst shape, and I'll move it close to you. You can see there's actually some rodent damage, and this one was actually in a bag. So I got excited when I grabbed it, and I didn't realize until I got home, whatever chewed it chewed through the bag, and got to the comic book. So they really wanted this Venom Spider-Man comic book. but So kind of a bummer, but a cool one nonetheless. All right, I got this Star Wars comic. The reason I really grabbed it, I, you know, these go for some pretty good money depending on the issues. This is an early one, probably from 1983. The reason I grabbed it was because it was another Star Wars one I'm gonna show you a little bit later in the good pile. And this was near it, so I just grabbed it. And yeah, it goes for some, some money online. I don't know if there's any like keys in it or anything like that or, you know, special events, but um, it's cool. Okay, then I got a whole bunch of New Mutants. Now, I like these old New Mutants because they have this Bill Sienkiewicz, um, you know, painted art on a lot of them. And they're just really, really neat. I think I actually have this one. Whenever I see them, I kind of tend to nab them. So this is the New Mutants Annual Steal This Planet, A Rock Fable. Very cool. Then we have New Mutants number 18. I think this is the first appearance of Warlock. It also has Demon Bear. I don't think you see him in full, but pretty cool. Danny Moonstar right in the front. You know, a lot of people didn't like the New Mutants movie, and I'm pretty critical of my Marvel movies, but actually I didn't mind the New Mutants movie. Just throwing it out there. We have New Mutants number 19, the next issue, which has the full cover appearance of Demon Bear. And then New Mutants 24... This might be a key, I don't remember, but again, really cool painted comic book. Then we have a whole bunch of sort of random stuff. I have the Inhumans number five. Uh, it's not worth particularly much, but it's in really good shape. I like it. It's got Black Bolt on the front and Maximus. We have Hawkeye and Mockingbird number one. Just thought it was neat. We have Daredevil Born Again. This is really cool for several reasons. One, we all have heard that Daredevil's coming back to the MCU on Disney Plus, and I think the name of the series is going to be Born Again. So I thought this was pretty cool. It's also a Frank Miller uh, as the author. He actually came back after his very legendary run with Elektra and Bullseye. So I thought that was great. Ah, here we go. We have Wolverine 23, just a really cool John Byrne cover with the claws out. I actually have a copy of it up there on my top row. I, I'll never say no to really cool Wolverine covers. Some random kind of minor ones here. We have New Mutants um, Special Edition number one. I'm not sure what that's worth. We have the Avengers 263. Um, I actually picked one of these up recently. Um, this is actually in that cocoon there, is actually Jean Grey. This is when the Avengers find the cocoon. And I also found Fantastic Four 286 when Jean Grey comes back to life out of the cocoon. I have Hulk 376, Green Hulk versus Grey Hulk. This, of course, it depicts the famous battle between the different psyches of Bruce Banner and the Hulk. And the next comic book here, the 377, is the very famous cover of sort of All Hulks Unite, where you get Smart Hulk. I actually have that in my collection, so I thought this was a really cool cover, and it goes sequentially with the other ones I have. All right, moving on to some slightly better stuff in the medium pile. We have New Mutants 100. I didn't see many new mutants that were this late. I was looking for 87 and of course 98. I didn't find them. I'm not saying they're not in there, but I didn't find them. Maybe they were in his better collection, but I did get 100, which is actually the first appearance of X-Force. This was really interesting because he had mostly older comics from the 80s and 90s, some 70s. This one, of course, is late 90s. 
And this is actually the origin of Echo. It's not her first appearance. And of course, we all know Echo is going to be, um, or already is in the MCU, but she's going to have her own show coming up soon. And uh, yeah, I grabbed this and it, it, and it was sort of a surprising find in there. So I, I nabbed it. <laughs> this one's crazy. Uh, I actually got this, I saw this on my first pass through his stuff and I got it on the second trip back. This is Dazzler 33 in Chiller. And this is cool because this is another Bill Sienkiewicz cover and clearly it's an homage to Michael Jackson's Thriller. Just a neat comic book. Whenever you see like, you know, sort of odd, strange covers like this, um, you get to jump on them. I don't love Dazzler, but tell me this isn't a cool cover. I think it's awesome. Ah, we have first Armor Wars here. This is Iron Man 225. This is the first in the story of the Armor Wars. I have several of these in my collection back there. I tend to find them every once in a while. This one actually, you know, isn't in great shape. It's pretty dirty. You can see there's a lot of like, you know, dirt or something, fungus of some sort mold on the Iron Man logo. So it's not in great shape. But I also got the second one, 226, the second Armor Wars. And this is him fighting against the Stingray. Just really cool. Ah, this is Web of Spider-Man number eight. As far as I know, it's not really a key, but it's a really cool cover. I have another one back there on my wall. I've always liked this comic book. So yeah, that's why I have hanging on my wall. No pun intended. Okay, now we're getting into some first appearances of Spider-Man villains. Here we have the Spectacular Spider-Man 107. This is the first appearance of Sin Eater. And this is actually the beginning of the storyline that culminates in Spidey fighting Daredevil that I showed you a little while ago. So I already have one of these, but it's a very cool comic book. We have the first appearance of Speed Demon in Amazing Spider-Man 222. This one's not in great shape, but a first appearance nonetheless. Ah, this is the first appearance of The Rose. Spider-Man villain, mobster villain. <laughs> this is The Amazing Spider-Man 262. Um, I'm blanking on this actor's name, but um, this is a special cover that appeared on The Amazing Spider-Man. You can actually see the photographer right there. Um, yeah, Brown, I guess is his name. He's taken the picture in the mirror. So kind of like a behind the scenes of the TV show kind of thing. So. Again, just like that Dazzler cover, if it's something you haven't seen before, grab it, it's weird. <laughs> First appearance of what, Spider Kid, Normie Osborn, I think it is. So yeah, Amazing Spider-Man 263, it's funny. I got this comic book the other day in one of my other videos. This is the first appearance of Slide in the Amazing Spider-Man 272. This one's not in great shape, it has some folds, I could probably get rid of those creases, but yeah. And then finally, in this pile, there were a whole bunch of Secret Wars. And I know you guys saw one in the footage, but um, don't get ahead of me. So here we go. We got Secret Wars number four, Secret Wars number five, which my son has an autographed Jim Shooter one up on the wall behind me. We have Secret Wars number seven, first appearance of, I think, the Julia Carpenter um, Spider-Woman. And this one's actually going up in value, I guess, because she might appear in, you know, uh, one of the Madam Web movies or Silk or something like that. This one was recently on a, a hot list I saw online. This is Secret Wars number 10, really cool Doctor Doom cover. Number 11, another really cool Doctor Doom cover. And number 12, the final issue of Secret Wars. And again, once more, a Doctor Doom cover without the mask. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You saw number eight in here when I was in the footage when I was going through it. I'm getting to that. Um, but yeah, I'm always happy to get these. Of course, they just announced Secret Wars is coming as the uh, a big crossover in the MCU. I'm excited for it. These have been going up in value and people are really trying to collect them. I'm happy to have them. The one question I have for all of you is they all have black Spidey mask on the bottom corner. And I've heard at least for the first issue, if you see the black Spidey mask, that means it's the second edition. I'm not sure if that means all these are second editions, but I don't mind. They're really cool comic books to have nonetheless. Now, before I get to the good pile, I have one more sort of honorable mention. This is Army War Heroes. I'm not sure what number it is, but um, it's a cool 12 cent war comic book. Um, I looked it up. It's not worth particularly much, but it's in really, really good shape. The bag's kind of dirty if, you, if you're looking at it and it looks kind of dirty. Trust me, it's the bag. It's actually in really good shape. Uh, I love these old war comics, especially when they have a really attractive cover, and this sort of certainly fits that bill. So this is sort of a... Uh, in that middle pile, but it's, you know, it's not, not Marvel or DC. So I just thought it was interesting. Okay, finally we get there. Let's get to the last pile. I have probably about 20 comic books here. These ones I pulled out because they are 
either worth good money or they are a key that are worthy of discussing on a YouTube video. So first we have Iron Man 219. This is the first appearance of Ghost, at least one of the ghosts. I'm not sure which one it is, but first appearance of Ghost. I don't think it's worth particularly a lot of money, but it's really cool. I also want to point out something. I don't have boards in any of these because I had so many comic books here. I actually ran out of boards and then I ran out of bags. So that's how many good comic books I got. And I have to go to the store soon to pick them up. So first appearance of Ghost. <laughs> Captain America 310, the first appearance of Anaconda and the Serpent Society. I've actually always wanted this comic book. I can't really explain why. Uh, Vision and the Scarlet Witch number one. This is part of a 12 issue series. Most of them, 1 through 11, aren't worth particularly much, but number 12 is always the hard one to find because that's the first appearance of both of their kids who, of course, move on to be become young Avengers. But I don't have this comic book, and it's a great cover. And if anyone who liked WandaVision, I think you can sort of understand the appeal of this. Okay, these next two comic books are back-to-back. -back. This is the Avengers 268 and the Avengers 269. It's hard to see, but behind me, I actually have a graded version of 267, which is the first appearance of the Council of Kangs. These are the next two in the series. I have both of these in my collection, and everyone knows that Kang is coming. Uh, the Kang Dynasty is going to also be an Avengers movie coming out in the MCU, and because this is sort of the story of the first Council of Kangs, they are definitely worth having. And I especially like this one here because it actually shows Kang fighting Immortus, who is another version of Kang. So... Very cool. Excited to happen to have both of these. I'm just bummed I couldn't find another 267. I would love to have a non-graded one for my collection. It must have been in those boxes somewhere. I couldn't find it. Uh, next we have Hercules, Prince of Power, number one. I believe this is the first of his two miniseries from the early 80s. And um, everyone knows Hercules showed up at uh, the end of Thor, Love and Thunder. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. And we ex expect to see him in lots of movies and shows moving forward. Another person who's been rumored, at least, to be in the MCU is Wonder Man. And this is another Bill Sienkiewicz cover. This is the first Wonder Man series that came out uh, in the 70s, I believe. I also have another one of these in my collection. Um, I just expect these to sort of go up once that they announce uh, Wonder Man being in the MCU or having his own show. So really cool. And again, I'm a sucker for these old painted covers. Okay, next we have Peter Parker, the, the Spectacular Spider-Man number 100. Um, this one's cool because you have a lot of really cool people on the cover. You get Spidey, of course, Kingpin, Black Cat, and The Spot. And The Spot has been confirmed to be in uh, the next Into the Spider-Verse, at least if not the main villain as one of the villains. Again, I already have this in my collection. But remember this because the ones you want to have for this storyline are the ones before this. You know, 99, 98, 97. And uh, hold on, those are coming up soon. We have The Amazing Spider-Man 256, the first appearance of Puma, one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. Again, can't explain why. I loved him as a kid. Uh, I already have one of these in my collection, but willing to have another one. I love these first appearances of Spider-Man villains. Here we go. West Coast Avengers number 46, the first appearance of the Great Lakes Avengers. Um, also one of the first appearances of them. Who is it? Um, the guy who can't die, maybe. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's also another first appearance. So again, Great Lakes Avengers, really cool. Now we're starting to get the ones that I actually had boards for, so you can rest assured that these are probably the nicest ones I found. We found Daredevil number 270, the first appearance of Blackheart, right there. Wolverine number 27, I already have this comic book. I found it in another flea market. That one's in okay shape. This one's in much better shape. This is a famous Jim Lee cover. This is also the picture they used for the Wolverine video game in the 90s. In fact, a lot of these comic books from those 90s, if you look at the back cover, you'll actually see this art as they're promoting that video game. So just a killer looking comic book. And um, I'm happy to, really happy to have it because my other one I have is in okay shape. This one's in really good shape, so good. Um, I might even send this in to get graded. Again, it's not worth a ton of money, but I feel like it's one that presents so well, it might be worth it if I can get over a 9.0. Oh. Man, here we go. Here's the other irony here. A lot of these comic books I got, I already own in my collection. And maybe the truth is that I just noticed them. I know what they are. So I was more likely to pull them out, which is what kind of scares me that I might have missed a lot of comics that I'm just not familiar with. But this is one I absolutely love this comic book. 
This is Spectacular Spider-Man 101. This is a very famous John Byrne cover. It's the negative space, they call it. Just all black and white. Uh, wicked cool comic book. One of the coolest covers that, you know, came out of the 80s, in my opinion. Just, just awesome. And this comic book is worth a premium simply because of the art. I don't think anything happens in, in the book itself, in the story, but it's just an awesome comic book art. And um, I actually bought one of these recently at a Comic-Con in Springfield. I'd been looking for it for a long time. I am shelling out like 25, 30 bucks for it. And honestly, I think this one's in better shape. And I got it for, well, probably 50 cents. Another great cover. Speaking of great Spider-Man covers, here we go. Spectacular Spider-Man number 99. First cover appearance of the spot. One of my favorite covers of all time. In fact, I would have to say these might be two of my favorite Spider-Man covers ever. So certainly in the Spectacular Spider-Man run. I love these covers. I already own them because I love them. And now I have one more. Ecstatic about that. Once again, incredible shape. Much better than the one I already have. And uh, there's just one tiny blemish. And I think I could probably get this one pressed and it might be worth grading. But that's the first cover appearance of Spot. What would it be without the first appearance of Spot? So this is the first appearance of the Spot in the costume. I believe the person who... His alter ego, Dr. Jonathan Owen, I think is his name, appears in the issue before this or a couple issues before that. So in, uh, the spot is hired by Kingpin to, you know, basically fight Spider-Man. And they use the cloaks of Cloak and Dagger. They use his like magic to try to, whatever. He tries basically to use interdimensional stuff, becomes a spot. Normal, you know, Spidey villain, you know, scientific accident kind of thing. But great cover nonetheless. You got Kingpin, you got Black Cat, and you got Spider-Man. You know, and that's one of those things, like, if it actually had the spot on the cover, I think this would go for a lot more. But even as it is, with the rumors of the spot, or I guess it's confirmed, the spot is going to be into the Spider-Verse 2. These have both jumped up considerably in the last couple of months. So, pretty excited to have these. Oh, yeah. This one, I think you saw in the footage. I couldn't believe this when I saw it. This is the first appearance of White Vision in the West Coast Avengers number 45. Um, yeah, this is the homage to that first appearance of Vision back in the 60s in the Silver Age. Really cool comic book. I did not have this comic book already. I love this. It goes for a pretty penny online. It is trending downward now that the White Vision has already come and gone, it seems like, in WandaVision. But how cool is that? Man, they just keep on coming. You saw this in the footage. This is Uncanny X-Men 221. This is the first appearance of Mr. Sinister. I believe he had a cameo a couple issues before, but this is the first full appearance and he's right in the first cover. Once again, you have to wonder if Mr. Sinister was on the cover, how much would this go for? But still, this comic book goes, you know, 50, 60, 75 bucks. And my goodness, this is in much better shape than the one I already have. And the one I already have is actually kind of dull. Um, it looks a little faded, this blue here on this copy right here is like electric. It's just incredibly bright. Super excited to have this comic book. This one's interesting. This one I had seen before but knew nothing about. And this one is Star Wars number 68. I mentioned before, I saw that other Star Wars comic book. This was right after it. They were the only two Star Wars books in the entire collection. And this one here is a, you know, there's an appearance of Dengar, I believe. Maybe the first appearance of Dengar. Um, just a really, really cool cover. But of course you got Boba Fett right on the front making it very iconic. I think it's the first mention of Mandalorians ever. I think it's the first mention of them in any work. So this comic book is awesome. I mean, it, it is sharp. There is no blemishes on this that I can see. It's bright. What a great find. And this goes for all, this goes all over the place online when I looked it up. And uh, it's so good though, I think I'm gonna have to get this one graded. It's, it's that nice. And speaking of really nice, I've got to the last and probably most obvious uh, comic book that you saw in my footage. And this is Secret Wars number eight. And uh, once again, I'm not sure if this is the first or a second printing, but this is the famous origin of the symbiote suit that Peter Parker Spider-Man gets on the last page of this book. I already have one of these in much worse condition. This one here, I mean, maybe it's a little faded. It sort of has that orangey red. I never know what color it's supposed to be, but there is not a spine tick to be seen. There's a slight sort of waffling to it, you know, the way it was stored in the box, which I'm pretty sure can be pressed out very easily. But this is so good, I'm absolutely sending this in to be graded. So that completes all the stuff I got. So just a quick recap, I'm gonna show you the best stuff here. We'll just kind of fan them up. And um, 
I want to talk a little bit about sort of what I paid for these and have a small discussion about, you know, what's considered a stealth buy, where essentially you sneakily get comic books worth more than, um, than you pay for them. So in this case here, as I mentioned, he, when I told him I had about, you know, 40 comic books, almost 50 comic books, he basically said 50 cents each. And I, you know, the third comic book down was this one. I think I had, you know, first appearance of Mr. Sinister there. So I said, um, I appreciate that, but I'm going to pay you more than that. And basically, you know, the other comic books I went back and got later, I only got a couple more. But essentially, I paid him $100 for all of these. You know, I was completely honest. I could have bought all these comic books, no joke, for 25, 30 bucks. I have no doubt in my mind. I probably could have bought all the boxes maybe for $100. And it was something I did discuss with him potentially doing that. But I was honest. I wanted the good stuff that was here. I took out these really good comic books and I paid him more than he asks. Now, that being said, I still clearly paid less than what they were worth. So I kind of want to appeal to all of you. Do you think I got a good deal getting all these comic books for, you know, slightly less than $100? Um, do you think I should have offered him more? Do you think I will fool for not taking his first offer and getting them really, really cheap? Like what would you have done in that case? Um, I'm not sure if I feel guilty about it or not. We seem to build a really good rapport and he wants to show me some of his better stuff. So that was part of the reason I wanted to like offer him more money. So he knew I just wasn't going to be in there and try to like rob him blind. So again, I want to know what you think, uh, I should have done? Do you think I did the right thing? Do you think I got a good deal? Do you think I'm a villain? So I'd love to know your thoughts. So please, down in the comments, let me know what you think of the collection, what you think I should have done, what you would have done, and make sure while you're doing it that you like and subscribe to my channel because as I've mentioned, there's a lot more videos like this coming out soon at all the flea markets I'm going to be going to in the next couple of weeks. So thank you for watching. I hope to hear from you. And in the meantime, keep on hunting.